Once again, it's on What's Up World. It's your boy, Vic XL. This is the Ryan Dirty Show, the Ryan Dirty Podcast. We bridge the gap between hip-hop and everyday life. We're bringing you the movers and shakers of tomorrow today. That's right. If you're out there influencing the community in a positive way, whether it's through arts, entertainment, activism, if you're just out there trying to change the world, then the Ryan Dirty Show is the platform for you. I got to say one time for everyone who rebroadcast the Ryan Dirty Show, one time for WRFG 89.3 FM, one time for BeatBreakRadioFM.com, and like I said, one time for all the streaming networks who definitely replay the Ride and Dirty Show. Go to your favorite streaming network and type in the words Ride and Dirty Radio and we will pop up. And that's R-I-D-I-N-D-U-R-T-Y-R-A-D-O. R-A-D-I-O. I spelled it wrong. One time. All right. I got to say this real quick because I know a lot of people don't think it matters. It doesn't matter to them. But you know what? Tomorrow is Georgia's runoff election day. So if you haven't had a chance to vote, Please go out and make a difference and get your vote on. Again, tomorrow is Georgia's runoff election day. So try to get out to the polls and vote tomorrow because the runoffs are very, very important to finally put who we want in office if they made it to the runoff. Okay? Okay. All right. You know how we always like to do right about now? We definitely got to start the show off by saying one time for our amazing sponsors. All right? Got to say one time for Dr. Juice Cleanse. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all-natural cleanser that does amazing things for your body, like slow down the aging process. It can help you lose up to 25 pounds in 10 days. Also, Dr. Juice Cleanse can help relieve stress, help provide a balanced pH system for your body, as well as removing mucus and toxins from your body. That's right. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an independently owned company. Um, what I think is really, really dope. It was started by a a hip-hop artist, someone who um, decided to put down the mic and create this business and help change the world. So do me one big favor and visit drjuicecleanse.com. Find out more about this amazing cleanser and buy you some. Start living healthier and longer today. Okay, do that for me. Also, got to say one time for our amazing sponsor, WMR Music Group. That's right, WMR Music Group, WMR Music Group, they are a, what WMR Music Group, they are, they're a company that helps you market and promote your music as well as market and promote your brand. If you're out there and you're trying to get your music career to the next level and it somehow has stalled, well, WMR Music Group can definitely, definitely help you by, um, one of the things they do is they can help you, <clears throat> what I like to call the A&R department, by booking you interviews, on radio shows, on blogs, and magazines. They also can get your videos to all the latest blog sites, all the video channels. They also can get your hot single in the hands of some of the country's hottest DJs. Now, WMR Music Group has an amazing six-week program that you can start seeing immediate results. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. You can visit them at www.wmr media.com and find out more about this amazing company and help get your music career to the next level ASAP. All right. So again, remember WMR 
media.com as well as drjuicecleanse.com. Please, please visit the websites of both our sponsors. Follow them on social media and make sure you tell them Big XL and the Ride Dirty Crew sent you and get your discount today. Okay? All right. Now, you know, I, I told you tomorrow, make sure you get out and vote because it's Georgia's um, runoff day. But also, you know, I like to tell you about the, the, the different holidays. Tomorrow, just so you know, tomorrow is National Cookie Day. Okay, so make your way over to the Great American Cookie Company or bake you some cookies or do whatever you choose. But tomorrow is National Cookie Day as well as tomorrow is National Sock Day. So please put on your funky fresh socks, go get your cookies, and definitely, definitely have fun. All right? Again, tomorrow, December the 4th, is National Cookie Day as well as National Sock Day. All right, real quick, let me run down my celebrity birthdays. I have quite a few. I got to start off by saying happy birthday to the Diamond Princess, uh, rapper, star of Love & Hip Hop Miami, Miss Trina, turns 40 years old today. I also got to say happy birthday to Atlanta, Phenon rapper, Lil Baby, wham, 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 name Lil Baby. Lil Baby turns 24 years old today. Got to say happy birthday to probably what's considered the hottest African-American comedian Actress right now, Miss Tiffany Haddish. She turns 39 years old today. She's definitely off the success of two huge movies this year, Night School and Nobody's Fool. Got to say happy birthday and rest in peace to um, Brooklyn rapper Chinks Drugs. Also got to say happy birthday to Mr. This is how we do it. Mr. Montel Jordan turns 50 years old today. Happy birthday, Montel. And as I stroll over on my Facebook page, definitely got to say happy birthday to one of the coolest cats I know. Happy birthday to Mr. X Rap Brown. All right. Now, you know, I always like to tell you guys, if you follow any of the people I mentioned for their birthdays on social media, make sure, because I know they love it when you purchase their music, listen to their music, or watch their films, or whatever they're doing. So, a great birthday gift to anybody I mentioned would be for you to follow them Tell them happy birthday and um, just peep some of their previous work. All right, do that for me, and that will make me happy as well as make them happy. Real quick, let me jump into celebrity news. Got to say one time for my man, Offset of the Migos. He um, rushed his album out, and it um, seems like the album's going to come in at the number one spot. Who thought Offset would have a number one album? But his brand new album is called The Red Room, and... It's going to debut at the number one spot. I also got to say one time for my man, Black Man, Team Black Man in the building. Um, everybody represent on Facebook Live, man. Definitely love you guys. What up, Ron? What up, Nanook? What up to my beautiful wife, Miss Maria? And um, got to say one time for my man, Lil Wayne. He just announced his upcoming tour for 2019. It's called the I Ain't Shit Without You Tour. Lil Wayne, that, that name's a little hard on the soul, but... Um, Congratulations on you, to you, and I also got to say congratulations to my man Meek Mill. His brand new album, Championship, is definitely, definitely doing his thing, and um, I think it's really, really cool that Meek went and um, made amends with um, Game, he made amends with Drake, and um, he's just moving forward, staying positive, and um, basically just put out a awesome album. Okay, so I just gave y'all a little hip-hop news. Definitely told y'all about our wonderful sponsors. And I informed you guys about celebrity birthdays. Now, before I bring my guests on, because everybody says I always forget to say this. So, if you're having problems watching any of the archive videos or any of the interviews and you don't like going to the streaming network, you can just go to RidingDirtyRadio.com and listen to all our previous recorded interviews right there or you can follow us on instagram and twitter at riding dirty radio all right ladies and gentlemen boys and girls now this is my favorite time of the, of the show <clears throat> it's where i sit back and i give the platform to someone who's definitely doing their thing in our community tonight is no different than any other night on the riding dirty show so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls get really really close to your computer your radio device your your, your mobile phone, however you're choosing to listen to the Ride and Dirty Show, get really, really close and glue your ears to the speaker as we welcome attorney Michael Howard Wolf to the show. I had to do that. What's up, Mike? 
Hey, what's going on up in Atlanta? Man, I'm just living, maintaining. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I spent a couple weeks in your beautiful city over the summer. Had a good time. All right, what brought you to Atlanta? Were you here on business or personal? Well, a little bit of both. Um, I'm actually, I was actually playing in the National Bridge Tournament at the uh, Marriott Marquis. Oh, so you are accredited bridge player? Yes, sir. That is what's up. So that's what an esteemed lawyer like yourself during your spare time, you play bridge? Well, I could say I, in my spare time, I practice law. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're, you're, you are correct. All right, so let's start from the nitty grit. Let's start from the begin, and let's walk these people on the walk of Mr. Michael Howard Wolf. First, let's let them know where you're from and what initially piqued your interest into getting in the law field. Well, I am uh, actually was born in the Midwest in Milwaukee, but I grew up here in South Florida, presently living in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> And uh, law, uh, for me, was always a possibility. And my mother uh, saw to it that it was made reality. <laughs> I had good parents and good guidance. And uh, they thought I had a, a big mouth and a great personality. And therefore, I obviously would make a good lawyer. All right. So if it wasn't for your mother, what um, professional field do you think you would win in? Um, I don't know. I had a guidance counselor in junior high school who told me I'd, I'd probably be a garbage collector. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> but my mother wasn't having any of that. So um, <laughs> that, that, so I, I always say that might have been, uh, you know, what I wound up doing. I mean, listen, when I was a kid, I want, to be perfectly honest with you, since I was born in Milwaukee, I'm a big Braves fan and maintain my interest in the Braves even after they moved to Atlanta. Uh, and I always wanted to be the catcher for the Braves. That's what I was going to be when I was a kid. All right. Um, did you play any baseball um, throughout school? Uh, yeah, throughout elementary school. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't exactly the fastest, the most nimble, um, I was a pretty good softball player, but I was never going to be a major league baseball player. So that's what happens when you can't, uh, 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 compete in athletics, then you have to do more brainy stuff like practicing law. All right. So your mother was the push. She pushed you towards it. When did you realize like, you know what? Mom is right. And practicing law is something I'm pretty good at and I definitely want to do for the rest of my life. I would say I thought she was right when I collected my very first fee as a lawyer. And you were like, whoa. <laughs> I said, this, this might be a pretty good profession to be lucrative. So do you remember your very first case? And if you're allowed to talk about it, what, what was that first case? Well, my very first case was, was um, when I got out of law school, I went to work for a lawyer in uh, a little suburb of Miami called Hialeah. And the very first case that he sent me on was an uncontested divorce hearing. And when I came back to the office, he asked me, how did it go? And I said, I lost. He says, you lost an uncontested divorce case? I said, well, I'm a young lawyer, and um, I guess my client didn't answer the questions correctly or something like that, so I have to go back. I mean, the judge said I could come back when I figure out what I'm doing. So my boss at the time, he wasn't real impressed with uh, uh, his, his first-year lawyer losing his first case, which was an uncontested divorce. Man, that how did how, what did that do for your self esteem? Because I would have been like, hold on, what? 
Well, in, in the law practice, one learns uh, to not take things personally, because if you take things personally, you're going, to be, you're going to be too emotional and too stressful. A good lawyer maintains some detached objectivity, because that's typically what best serves the clients. Now, a lot of times the clients want the lawyer to be um, bombastic and, um, you know, kind of over the top and, and kind of crush the opposition and what have you, but that's not reality. I mean, you see that on TV, but, but in the real practice of law, that's, that's not reality. Um, that detached objectivity uh, is what allows one like me, who's been practicing law for more than 40 years, uh, to actually have made it this far without um, melting down. Okay. All right, now, some of your main practices are you do business law, criminal defense, gaming law, civil litigation, personal injury, immigration law, and divorce law. Out of all those practices, do you favor one over the other? Well, I like my gaming practice, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it's, it's, there's only probably two lawyers here in the state of Florida that uh, really have a little niche specialty uh, in, in gaming. And when I say gaming, I'm not necessarily talking about the uh, casinos. I'm not necessarily talking about, uh, you know, the, the paramutuals, horse racing, dog racing, high life, things like that. My, my clients in the gaming area are what we would call gray area uh, gaming. Here in this, that's what we would call it here in the state of Florida. And I think you have uh, the same or similar issues in Georgia because I'm familiar with the uh, Georgia Amusement Machine Association. Uh, I've read their manual and, and what have you. But I think most all states uh, in the country have issues with uh, private people that are trying to set up uh, gambling strip mall type of casinos where they think they can take advantage of some of the loopholes in the law of that particular state and be able to operate, uh, you know, in that fashion. So here in Florida, uh, we have several loopholes in our uh, gaming, in our gaming statute, and uh, there's no shortage of imaginative uh, businessmen. Let's just put it that way. And so they come up with these ideas. And since I'm uh, probably, well, I probably uh, have more experience in this field than any lawyer in the state. And I've handled hundreds of cases from Pensacola to Key West. Uh, and, you know, I have my, my finger on the pulse of the industry. I've had the lobby up in Tallahassee with the legislature. Uh, it's just, it's a field that I'm passionate about. Um, and my clients know that I'm passionate about it, and they know that I know what I'm doing with it, and, uh, you know, a, a lawyer is like anybody else. We like praise. We like to be told how great we are and how knowledgeable we are and what have you, and that just happens to be an area of practice where all of my clients in that area are like that <laughs> towards me, so that's why I like it. Now, on the other hand, uh, at the other end of the spectrum, well, we can talk about divorce cases, which I kind of made a deal with myself uh, a couple of years ago. I said, I'm never going to take another divorce case. But never's a long time, and I didn't really adhere to that. Uh, and I've taken a few divorce cases to my regret. Uh, so, but I used to do a lot of that in my, you know, in my younger days. But divorce law is, is, is my least favorite reason being that uh, it's not always lawyering. You're doing a lot of uh, psychiatry. Uh, you're doing a lot of babysitting. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of dirty laundry, if you know what I mean. You're dealing with two people that are totally stressed out and at, at odds with each other. And it's just not a pleasure for me. It's just not a pleasurable uh, experience to uh, to be involved in those kinds of highly, you know, litigious and highly emotional cases. And that was going to be my question. What? Why do you dislike uh, divorce? But I can imagine, like when you were taking when in doing divorce cases, 
like how many late night calls you get or how often do you find yourself not being a lawyer for more of a counselor? Um, well, I'm one of those lawyers that makes myself available to my clients 24-7, so I sleep with my cell phone next to my pillow, and uh, it rings uh, with regularity, <laughs> I have to say, uh, just because my clients know that I'm available. And one, you know, one thing that, that people love about their lawyer uh, is that their lawyer cares about them, takes care of them, is, is uh, attendant to their emotional needs and what have you. And so I've been doing it long enough where I don't, I don't mind doing that. It, it gets, when, when it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and they just want to call you and, and you know, give you their diary of the day fighting with their soon-to-be ex-wife, that gets a little bit old sometimes. But... Uh, I don't mind doing it to a certain extent. Of course, the clients don't like it when they get the bill at the end of the month because they don't realize how much of my time that they're taking. And when their whole bill is hours and hours and hours of phone calls and meetings and text messages, uh, they don't like that. So, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a fine line. I can keep them on the phone for hours, but when they get the when they start getting the bills, the, the phone calls tend to uh, start to be minimal. Now, do a lot of people think the phone calls are free? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of my clients think everything I do is free. <laughs> I have to, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of have to set them straight, you know, after a while. All right, now, have you ever had a client that you said, I don't care what walk, a life or situation you're in, I will never, ever represent you again? Yes. <laughs> to to, to uh, put it bluntly, uh, you know, clients, look, well, clients uh, like any other business, your customers, your clients, uh, you know, for somebody like you, your radio advertisers and things like that, uh, they can. They all have their own ideas. The clients that like to tell me how to do my job uh, are not are not my favorite clients. The clients, you know, that want to argue with everything that you do are not my favorite clients. The clients that want to do all of that and then not pay you are also not my favorite clients. So. Uh, yes, I've had many, many people that were my clients, some for many, many years, uh, that, you know, after a while, it just doesn't, it just doesn't going to work anymore. I don't need the hassle. I don't need the intrusion into my, you know, into my professional life that they represent. And yes, I think every lawyer, probably every lawyer on the planet, uh, has certain people that they would refuse to represent in the future. Clients that don't tell the truth. Uh, try, clients that, you know, try to hide things and what have you. So, I mean, I've had people ask me, you know, if Donald Trump called me to represent him, would I represent him? And, you know, he would be the kind of guy that I wouldn't because he doesn't tell the truth. Okay. That was going to be my next question. How important to you as an attorney to know 100% that you're representing a client who's telling the truth? Well, I always impress upon my clients that their lawyer is their best friend in the matter that, that they're seeking your counsel on. And because your lawyer is their best friend, and because everything that a client tells his lawyer is confidential, uh, there's no reason to obfuscate or bend the truth or, you know, leave certain material facts out of the story that they're going to tell me. Uh, and I try to nip that right in the bud right away. And I tell them, listen, if I don't know the truth about every single thing, when we get in the, into court, for sure. Something's going to come out that you didn't tell me or you told me the opposite of what was the truth, and that's going to be the death knell of your case. So 
uh, you know, get, you just have to understand right away. And if I find out that my client has lied to me or lied to the court, uh, then uh, that's going to cause me to withdraw from that representation. You should charge them extra for lying. It should be extra fee for lying. <laughs> that's a good idea. Do you, you want to be my uh, collection enforcer? I'll, you know, I, I have a position open for you. <laughs> hey, I'm coming to Florida to get that job. Um, I want to ask you, um, being that you're in Florida, um, a law, I'm just going to ask you, um, just give us a little brief synopsis of this, the law. Um, tell me about the stand your ground law in Florida, because that tends to come up a lot, you know, especially here in Atlanta. We hear mm -hmm. about the stand your ground because of very, uh, quite a few high profile cases. Um, tell me about the stand your ground law and what it actually means. Well, the standard ground law means that if you are in peril, if your safety is threatened, uh, you can take actions uh, that you deem necessary to protect yourself. Uh, you know that that's the essence of all the, the uh, standard ground, uh, you know, types of statutes. In other words, we're allowed to defend ourselves to the extent necessary. The problem comes with what is the extent that's necessary, and that's where all the contentious cases come from, is, you know, for example, we had uh, George, uh, I don't know, I can't think of his last name off, off the top of my head, but, but we had, uh, you know, the guy that, that used the stand, stand your ground law uh, where he shot uh, the young uh, black uh, man who was, you know, walking down the street with, candy in a bag and wearing a hoodie and it became the, the whole case uh, became about whether or not the use of deadly force was necessary uh, under you know under the circumstances that he was in and he was able to get a not guilty verdict not guilty verdict uh, because I guess the facts showed that uh, you know, his use of force was reasonable under the circumstances. So it, it, it's a type of, it's the type of law that's always subject to certain interpretations by the court. Uh, you've got a jury deciding those issues, obviously, in criminal cases. Uh, but, but again, the essence of uh, that stand your ground law is that we are allowed to defend ourselves when we feel our safety is threatened or we're in peril. All right. Now, Zimmerman. Yeah, there you go. George, George Zimmerman. Yeah, George Zimmerman. Yeah. And, and, then, and the kid was Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin, yes. All right. Now, what's the difference between stand your ground and self-defense? Or is there a difference? Well, stand your ground goes a little further than, than self-defense because think about the words that you're using. 90 defense, seconds. Right, is, you know, using minimal, the most minimal force that you can use in order to defend yourself. The stand your ground law is not limited in that fashion because it doesn't, re you know, it doesn't require you to take the most minimal action. It requires you to. It requires. It allows you to take what you consider to be reasonable action. Self defense, uh, though, is not going to be a good defense if if um, you're using more force than what was necessary. So, in other words, the standard is different. Uh, the the standard is much tighter in a self defense case than it would be in a stand your ground case. But in a lot of ways, they're similar as well. But that, that would be the technical difference between the two. All right. Um, before we go, because, it's, man, when you're talking and having a good talk, it goes by so fast. And I definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Yes. Um, I've noticed that a lot of professionals, um, Dr. Miami, just a lot of people in the professional world has taken to social media. And I noticed that you are, as well has taken to Instagram. You give out tips mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. and things like that. What made you decide to utilize social media to help your practice? 
Well, um, I was kind of living in the dark ages. I like to say that that I was still using typewriters and carbon paper uh, until I was introduced to the concept of, of social media marketing. Uh, and if I wanted to rebrand uh, myself and my law practice and my law firm and what have you, uh, it was taught to me that uh, social media is the proper platform, not TV advertising, not billboard advertising, spend advertising, you know, things that, uh, you know, that a lot of, of lawyers spend a lot of time and money on. Uh, but I learned very quickly uh, from some people around me that are very good at it, uh, just exactly what it could do. Uh, and when I learned that, it's, it's really been amazing that I've had so many people uh, say to me, wow, I saw, you know, I saw this on Facebook, I saw you on Instagram, I'm connecting with you on LinkedIn, and all, you know, and all that stuff, and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't even know half of it. I'm personally, I'm not real experienced with that stuff. I mean, I know how to sign into Facebook, but, you know, posting something on there would be, you know, would be, uh, you know, something that I'm still in the learning stage of. So uh, it, it, I can see, though, that it, it's a very powerful uh, method of, of promoting a business, whether it be a profession like law or anything else. Uh, and I would say that, uh, you know, that's where the future is going to be. And the other mediums, uh, you know, TV, radio, and what have you, I think are are – you know, really going to go to the back burner with that stuff. Okay. Um, and I might be wrong, but, and I think this is very necessary, um, whether it's on YouTube or social media or television. I've never noticed, you know how they have all the judge shows? Why? Morning. Is there such thing as a lawyer show that's like reality that follows a lawyer as they take the cases like a Judge Judy or Judge Brown? Uh, not that I'm familiar with. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> I think the last lawyer show I watched was L.A. Law, you know, about 25 years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. There are, there are none like that. And the judge shows are... <laughs> Uh, you know, kind of, kind of laughable because if you really went to a courtroom like some of those are, judges don't act like that in in real life. I mean, most judges are, you know, fairly subdued and they're, you know, they they don't feel like they're acting when they're sitting on the bench. So, you know, you people just get a wrong, you know, the very wrong impression of what, uh, you know, a courtroom and a hearing and a trial are really like by just watching it on TV. But, of course, a lot of my clients, you know, think they have a great idea of what a lawyer does because of what they see on TV. So, it's, you know, it, 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 you just you don't know what's involved by just watching something on TV. You just don't. All right. You put over 40 years in, in the game of practicing law. Mm -hmm. what, what has been mm -hmm. the, what has been the most rewarding thing for you, and what would be your words of advice to the people listening to the show? Well, my my first piece of advice would be if you have an issue uh, that involves any kind of legality, if you're thinking about entering into a contract, you're thinking about buying a house, uh, you're you're thinking about uh, even investing, uh, you shouldn't be afraid to consult with a lawyer before you let it take any step like that, right? It's uh, so many of my clients sign sign first and ask me later, at which point it's too late, instead of the other way around. And so my advice to anybody would be if you even have an inkling of a legal issue, it doesn't even have to be an issue. It can, it, it can just be something that you want to do. You haven't done this before, and you need to get a little bit of counsel. I mean, so if you, you pay a small consultation fee to a lawyer, it can save you a lot of uh, stress, aggravation, and money 
uh, down the road. It's just a little bit of a preventive action, like the dentist would tell you, or like the doctor would tell you, you know, for your checkups every six months. And, and it's no different, you know, inso, insofar as law is concerned. As far as my, my most rewarding experiences are getting cases resolved for people with a minimum of stress, a minimum of time, a minimum of expenditure, and being able to get them a good result through a resolution short of a ton of litigation uh, and then have the client be appreciative of that, uh, I would say for me is the greatest reward because I like my clients to be happy. Uh, however that may come about, I want my clients to be happy, satisfied, and not too stressed over what they've had to go through. All right, that is really, really cool and dope. All right, Mr. Wolf, before you get out of here, let the people know, number one, how to get in touch with you if they have, if they're seeking seeking your services, um, if they're in the Florida area, give them your address. Uh, just let the people know how to contact you and further any legals. Well, the, the number one thing that I would recommend is visit our website, uh, Michael Howard Wolf Law Firm. Dot com. And <laughs> I use my full name, mhwlawfirm.com is the, is the web address. Uh, and you can see all of the services that we offer. Um, we've got some videos posted there on uh, areas of law that, uh, on YouTube, uh, you know, with regard to areas of law that are everyday things like speeding tickets and uncontested divorce cases and, and what have you. Uh, and that's that's really the best place to, to become familiar with the services that we offer. I'm down here in Fort Lauderdale, uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale, and my address is on the website and all my contact information and all of our social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and, and, and what have you. Uh, now that I've transitioned to that after being an old-time fuddy-duddy, um, I can talk a little bit more intelligently about that stuff. So I've come into the real world, and I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not shy about uh, getting the information out there. All right, um, I definitely appreciate what you do, and I'm sure all the people who've used your services definitely, definitely appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on the show, and do me one big favor, and please continue putting up your tips and the things that you're doing on Instagram, I think that's really, really dope, and I think a lot of people can learn from it. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Good talking to you. And um, I'm still hyped up by your introduction there, you know, when, when your show gets going. I was I was up and dancing around. All right. I appreciate that. I have to get myself going. It gets me pumped. But I, my last thing, Mr. Wolf, has anyone ever told you the name Michael Howard Wolf sounds like a superhero or an alias for a superhero. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like the idea. Um, but no, nobody's ever nobody's ever mentioned that I was a superhero. You sound like l lawyer by day, Wolfman by night. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfman, there you go. There you go. All right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, I definitely, definitely appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, again, continue success and have a wonderful night. You do the same and same to all your listeners. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know how we do it right here on the Ryan Dirty Show. That was attorney Michael Howard Wolf. Definitely, definitely, definitely out here aggressively fighting for your rights. All right. You know how we do it on the Ryan Dirty Show, man. Until we will be back. Sooner than you think, because I got a lot of shows lined up. I love you guys. Y'all love each other. Everybody on Facebook Live, I appreciate y'all for checking in. One time for my man, black man, definitely out there doing his thing. Always supporting. I gotta definitely rock my black man shirt ASAP. I got, I got, I got the Pittsburgh hat pirates. The Pittsburgh pirates had to go with my black man shirt, so I'm gonna be rocking it real soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Vic XL, riding dirty show. Love somebody. Hug somebody and be good. Peace. <coughs>